in this module we are going to discuss the second phase of developmental planning that started after 1990 there was a shift in the development strategy during the 1990s with the onset of new economic policy which heralded the era of liberalization privatization and globalization which is sometimes known as lpg era the implementation of new economic policy led to a quantitative and qualitative change in the role of the state and the instrument of planning in the process of economic development the new economic policy can be described as market oriented or market friendly and provided a greater role for the private sector the five year plans are also no more indicative in nature and the goals of the planning are to be achieved through private initiative and market forces the role of the public sector has undergone a change and it was to play a coordinating role along with the private sector thus from a commanding heights role to a coordinating private initiative role the public sector has witnessed a tremendous change in its scope the development strategy since 1990s focuses on growth with equity and social justice but there is a greater reliance on the market mechanisms and private sector at the same time there is a greater emphasis on the role of foreign investments and trade in accelerating the process of economic development after studying this module you shall be able to know the development experience under plan period phase 2 learn the achievements of the plans identify different features of the plan after 1990s evaluate the development experience under plan period phase 2 the implementation of new economic policy led to a quantitative and qualitative change in the role of the state and the instrument of planning in the process of economic development the new economic policy can be described as market oriented and provided a greater role for the private sector the five year plans are now more indicative in nature and the goals of planning are to be achieved through private initiative and market forces the development strategy since 1990s focuses on growth with equity and social justice but there is greater reliance on the market mechanism and private sector at the same time there is a greater emphasis on the role of foreign investments and trade in accelerating the process of economic development now we will discuss that how the eighth plan was postponed by 2 years on account of political changes at the center so instead of starting in 1990 it started in 1992 the country was passing through a severe balance of payments crisis accompanied by high fiscal deficits and inflation the macroeconomic reforms also known as rao manmohan reforms initiated a series of reforms to tackle the problems and move the economy towards high growth with stability the eighth plan reflected these reforms and undertook a new direction in pursuance of the objectives of economic growth and social justice the eighth plan heralded a new era of high gdp 
an industrial resurgence. The eighth five-year plan achieved a high GDP growth rate of 6.8%. The shift in the development strategy during the 1990s with the onset of the new economic policy, NEP, heralded the era of liberalization, privatization, and globalization. The NEP can be described as market-oriented and provided a greater role for the private sector. The second phase of planning started from the eighth five-year plan. The eighth five-year plan, which was supposed to start from April 1, 1990, could not be started on scheduled time because of some political changes at the center during 1990-92. The National Development Council ratified the format of the plan in one of its many meetings held on May 23, 1992. The plan began on April 1, 1992 and ended on March 31, 1997. The role of public sector undergoes a change and was to play a coordinating role along with the private sector. Thus, from a commanding heights role to a coordinating private initiative role, the public sector saw a change in its role. The five-year plans are now more indicative in nature and the goals of planning are to be achieved through private initiative and market forces. The development strategy since 1990s focuses on growth with equity and social justice but there is greater reliance on the market mechanism and private sector at the same time there is a greater stress on the role of foreign investments and trade in accelerating the process of economic development the ninth plan 1997 to 2002 was prepared under the United Front Government. The main objective of this plan was on growth with social justice and equality. The plan focused on agriculture and rural development with a view to generating employment and eradicating poverty. The plan aimed at achieving a higher GDP growth rate of 7% per annum but realized only 5.3% of GDP growth rate. The 10th plan strategy took note of the growing poverty and inequality. The 10th plan also took cognizance of the controls and restrictions on individual initiative and realized the need to overhaul the development strategy as well as of the institutional structures that guide the development process. In accordance, the plan redefined the role of the government and provided an encouraging role for the private sector. The plan observed that there are many areas, example, the social sectors, where the role of state will clearly have to expand. There are other areas, example, infrastructure development, where the gaps are huge and where private sector cannot be anticipated to step in significantly. The role of government in these areas have to be stretched and restructured. The 10th plan targeted a growth rate of 8%, but could achieve 7.8%. The 11th plan aimed at sustainable development and inclusive growth. This plan aims to achieve faster, broader, based and inclusive growth. It aimed at achieving a GDP growth rate of 9% per annum and planned to raise the investment rate from 30.1% of GDP 
to 35.1% during the plan period to achieve higher growth and social justice. The prompt GDP growth rate targeted at 9% was considered necessary for two reasons. A. To generate income and employment opportunities that were needed for improving the living standards for the bulk of the population. B. To generate the resources desirable for the financial and social sector programs intended at decreasing poverty and enabling inclusion. The economy performed well on the growth front averaging 8.2% for the first four years. The rise in growth rates in the 11th plan period compared to the 10th plan is modest but it is undoubtedly a good performance given the fact that there were severe challenges from the external front, the American subprime crisis and the European crisis. The 11th plan also had an ambitious target of reducing poverty by 2% per year. India is well poised to achieve the MDG Millennium Development Goal 2015 target of 50% reduction of poverty between 1990 to 2015. According to the then Prime Minister and the Chairman of the Planning Commission, Mr. P. V. Narsimha Rao, the fundamental objective of the 8th plan was the human development in various aspects. To achieve the fundamental objectives, the priorities of the 8th five-year plans were as follows. 1. To create sufficient employment opportunities so as to achieve the goal of full employment by the end of the century. 2. To impose restrictions on population explosion by seeking people's cooperation and b. Adopting the measures of encouragement and dejection. 3. To improve the primary education so as to eliminate the illiteracy among the people of ages between 15 to 35 years. 4. To make provisions for primary health facilities along with drinking water and vaccinations in all the villages to cover entire population. 5. Growth and diversification of agricultural activities to achieve self-sufficiency in food and to generate exportable surplus. 6. To strengthen the basic infrastructure such as energy, transport, communication, irrigation in order to support the development process on a sustainable basis. There are some challenges that emanate from the economy's transition to a higher and more inclusive growth path the structural changes that accompanies and the aspirations that it generates. The issue of inflation and rising deficit in the trade account along with uncertainties in the global economy are severe challenges. The weaknesses need to be addressed and the challenges need to be faced with greater vigour. Growth with equity and distributive justice was determined as the main focus of the ninth plan. In order to achieve this, four fields were identified which we shall discuss here. First is the quality of life to ensure a better life, measures for poverty elimination and providing minimum basic services were adopted so as to create required assets for poor and integrate them to the development process of the country in a better way. Second is employment promotion. This plan focused mainly on creating additional employment opportunities by developing technologies in labor oriented sectors. National Employment Insurance Scheme was planned to be implanted in such a way 
so as to ensure better and broad employment opportunities and break the vicious circle of poverty. Third is the regional imbalance. Under this plan, less factors in dual public sectors were given priority for investment. For removing the regional imbalances, accelerating the speed of industrialization in the backward areas was also a priority in the ninth plan. Last but not the least is self-reliance. In order to attain this, the following areas were placed on the priority list to improve the balance of payments, not only to check increasing foreign debt burden but also to ensure a containment in it, to increase dependence on non-debt foreign income for financing the requirement of rational development and balance of payments, to attain self-sufficiency in food gains, suitable utilization and protection of national resources including herbs and medicinal plants and to attain technological self-sufficiency. The 11th plan allocated 30% of the plan outlay for the social services sector which includes education, health and other welfare services. There was about 42% of the public sector outlay meant for energy, transport and infrastructure. Thus, the 11th plan laid a great emphasis on social sector, infrastructure and also rural development. The objective of inclusive growth and sustainable development aimed at accelerating growth and eradicating growth were achieved through focus on the social sector, infrastructure and rural development. The 12th plan 2012-2017 to aims at faster, sustainable and more inclusive growth. This plan has to face the internal and external challenges. The GDP growth rate was impressive despite the challenges. While the concern for inflation is high on agenda, the objective of faster, sustainable and more inclusive growth could help in nullifying the ills of inflation and inequities. India is executing better than many countries. This table shows the growth rate and public sector outlay of second phase of development planning in India. As we can see in the table, in the eighth five-year plan that has started from 1992 and ended in 1997, has public sector outlays of rupees 4 lakh 85,457.2 crores. This period has targeted growth rate of 5.6% and the actual growth rate that was realized during this period was 6.7%. In the ninth five-year plan that has started from 1997 and ended in 2002 has public sector outlays of rupees 8,59,200 crores. This period has targeted growth rate of 6.5% and the actual growth rate that was realized during this period was just 5.4%. In the 10th five-year plan that has started from 2002 and ended in 2007 has public sector outlays of rupees 15,25,639 crores. This period has targeted growth rate of 8% and the actual growth rate 
that was realized during this period was 7.4%. In the 11th five-year plan that has started from 2007 and ended in 2012 has public sector outlays of rupees 36 lakhs 44,717 crores. This period has targeted growth rate of 9% and the actual growth rate that was realized during this period was 7%. The 12th plan is right out has started in 2012 and will end in 2017. This plan is in process. The development strategy adopted for the 10th plan envisaged redefined role of government in the context of the emergence of a strong and vibrant private sector, need for provision of infrastructure and the need for imparting greater flexibility in fiscal and monetary policies. The 10th plan had emphasized the need to ensure equity and social justice, taking into account the fact that rigidities in the economy can make poverty-reducing effects of growth less effective. The strategy for equity and social justice consisted of making agriculture development a core element of the plan, ensuring rapid growth of those sectors which are most likely to create gainful employment opportunities and supplementing the impact of growth with special programs aimed at target groups. Thus, there has been a shift in the development strategy during the 1990s with the onset of the new economic policy and the macroeconomic reforms. The main features of the post-reforms planning strategy has been a curtailed role of the public sector and an enlarged role for the private sector. The role of the government in the development process has been redefined as the provider of social sector infrastructural services and an enabler and facilitator for the private sector. Let us summarize what we have discussed in this module. There was a shift in the development strategy during the 1990s with the onset of the new economic policy which heralded the era of liberalization, privatization and globalization. The implementation of new economic policy led to a quantitative and qualitative change in the role of the state and the instrument of planning in the process of economic development. The new economic policy can be described as market oriented and provided a greater role for the private sector. The five-year plans are now more indicative in nature and the goals of planning are to be achieved through private initiative and market forces. The role of the public sector has undergone a change and now it is supposed to play a coordinating role along with the private sector. Thus, the shift from the commanding heights to more of a coordinating private initiative, the public sector has witnessed a change in its role. The development strategy since 1990s focuses on growth with equity and social justice, but there is a greater reliance on the market mechanism and private sector. At the same time, there is a greater emphasis on the role of foreign investments and trade in accelerating the process of development. The eighth plan, the introduction of the eighth plan was postponed by two years on account of political changes at the center. So it started in the year 1992 instead of 1990. 
the country was passing through a severe balance of payments crisis accompanied by high fiscal deficits and inflation. The macroeconomic reforms, also known as Rao Manmohan reforms, initiated a series of reforms to tackle the problems and move the economy towards high growth and stability. The Eighth Plan, covering the period from 1992 to 1997, reflected these reforms and undertook a new direction in the pursuance of the objectives of economic growth and social justice. Growth and social justice and equity is the main goal of the Ninth Plan. The plan focused on agriculture and rural development with a view to generating employment and eradicating poverty with an aim to targeting 7% GDP growth rate. However, actual realization during this period was only 5.3%. The 10th plan strategy took note of the growing poverty and inequality. It also took cognizance of the controls and restrictions on the individual initiative and realized the need to overhaul the development strategy as well as of the institutional structures that guide the development process. In accordance, the plan redefined the role of the government and provided an encouraging role for the private sector. The plan observed that there are many areas, for example, the social sectors, where the role of the state will clearly have to expand. There are other areas, for example, infrastructure development, where the gaps are large and where the private sector cannot be expected to step in significantly. In these areas, the role of the government may have to be expanded, strengthened and restructured. The 10th plan targeted a growth rate of 8%, but could achieve 7.8%, which was very near to the target. The 11th plan, that is 2007 to 2012, aimed at sustainable development and inclusive growth. The plan aims to achieve faster, broader and inclusive growth. It aimed at achieving a GDP growth rate of 9% per annum and planned to raise investment rate from 30.1% of GDP to 35.1% during the plan period to achieve higher growth and social justice. The rapid GDP growth rate targeted at 9% was regarded necessary for two reasons. A. For the large population, generation of income and employment opportunities were needed for improving their living standards and B to generate the resources needed for financial and social sectors programs aimed at reducing poverty and enabling inclusion. The economy performed well on the growth front, achieving 8.2% for the first four years. The rise in the growth in the 11th plan period compared to the 10th plan is modest, but it is undoubtedly a good performance, given the fact that there were several challenges from the external front, the American subprime crisis and the European crisis. The 11th plan target also had an ambitious target of reducing poverty by 2% per year. India is well set to achieve the Millennium Development Goal target of 50% reduction in poverty between 1990 to 2050. There are some challenges that originate from the economy's transition to a higher and more inclusive growth path, the structural changes that accompany and the aspirations that it generates. The issue of inflation and rising deficit in the trade account along with uncertainties in the global economy are serious challenges. The weaknesses need to be addressed and the challenges need to be faced with greater vigor. Thus, the 11th plan laid a great stress on social sectors, the objective of, inclus of inclusive growth and sustainable development aimed at accelerating growth were achieved through focus on infrastructure and rural development, 
including other social sectors. The 12th plan, which covered the period from 2012 to 2017, aimed at faster, sustainable and more inclusive growth. The 12th plan had to face the internal and external challenges. The GDP growth rate of 5-6% to was impressive despite many challenges. While the concern for inflation is high on agenda, the objective of faster, sustainable and more inclusive growth could help in nullifying the ills of inflation and inequities. Appropriate mix of monetary and fiscal policy incentives within the framework of, of planning is required to encourage foreign direct investment. India is performing better than many countries. Thus, there has been a shift in the development strategy during the 1990s with the onset of the new economic policy and the macroeconomic reforms. The main features of the post-reforms planning strategy has been a lesser emphasis on the role of public sector and an enlarged role for the private sector. Apart from the role of facilitator for private sector, the role of the government in the development process has been that of emphasis on social sectors and improving the infrastructural services.